Hello, my sweet friends, and welcome to DIY with Nadia, where we love making wreaths. My sidekick today is Louie, and in today's video, we are doing a kind of requested video that I haven't done before. So what we're doing is we're using the Nadia method. We're using a 10-inch decomash, but we are using a square wreath form. I have never tried this method on a square wreath form, and that is exactly what we're going to do today. The little cherry on top is its actually a cherry themed wreath. We're going to use this gorgeous, a gorgeous sign, and we're going to make a cherry, no fray, Nadia method square wreath. Let's get started. Let's go over the supplies for this wreath. I'm going to start out with two rolls of decomash, each being 10 inches in width by 10 yards in length. For ribbon, I chose this beautiful combo of buffalo check, one that has little cherries, the other one's just blue and white. Both of these are wired and both of them are one and a half inches in width. You are going to need 24 pipe cleaners for the wreath base and then any extra for your sign. This beautiful welcome sign with sweet little cherries is six inches by 12 and a half inches. And I got this one at Craft Outlet. For my wreath base, I'm going to be using this square metal wreath form that is 14 inches by 14 inches. I'm going to get started by cutting up our decomash and I'm going to be cutting my decomash into 15 inch strips. That's going to give us 24 strips per roll for a total of 48. So no matter what colors you're using, just make sure you have 48 little deco mesh pieces that are all 15 inches in length. As usual, to make it easier, I'm going to cut these together. When it comes to the rotary cutter that I'm using, I'm going to link it in the description box below and you can always find it in my Amazon shop. I kind of wanted to try it because while well, it was really pretty, it comes in super cute colors quite cheap it works really nice really nice on the hand for safety you just go to the back and there's this little white button you press it and it's locked press it again and you can use it and as you can see it's just really really nice in the hand I'm I'm liking it it glides through two layers of decomash super easily I'm going to just curl up my decomash as is and put it in a little laundry basket I don't want to fuss with the decomash if I don't have to next I'm grabbing my 24 pipe cleaners fold them in half and cut them your pipe cleaners are going to be around six inches at this point and I'm just going to make little V's. I always love doing this. It makes just grabbing it and putting it on the bow so much easier. There's that and now we can get started on making our little bows. The first thing I want to do is overlay the ends and I want to overlay them about an inch and a half and then what I like to do is pinch both sides and bring it down with my one hand i'm going to hold on top and the center so it's easy to bring it up because we do have 10 inches of deco mesh that we are overlaying and i'm just going to start from the bottom and bring it together just like this then i'm grabbing my pipe cleaner and as you see ready to go right on there and i'm going to put it over the smooth end and this is where we gathered on this side and what I like to do is when I have the bow already in my hands I'm going to pull it back just a little bit so that when I'm twisting I am going to make a nice full twist two or three times and you have your little bow we have the deco mesh sticking out on this side on the outside and on the other side it's on the inside of the bow this makes it a zero fray little bow and these wreaths last for so long i love making these let's do a red one same thing i'm going to overlay it about an inch and a half and an inch and a half on this side bring it down with the hand you have on top hold it on top and hold it with your thumb in the center and we're going to come up from the bottom then i'm going to flip it over this is my smooth end Grab my pipe cleaner, 
put it on. When I have the pipe cleaner grabbed on this side, I'm going to push it back slightly and then I'm going to do a few tight twists. And there you go, you have a beautiful no fray little bow, or as I refer to it as the Nadia method little bow. Isn't that nice? At this point, this is when I just relax and start making all those pretty bows. I am done making all my no fray bows. Now it's time to attach them to our square wreath form. The square wreath form has eight sections and what I'm going to do is in the center sections, we are going to put five bows and on the corners, we are going to put seven bows. That is going to total our 48 that we have made. Since the corners will need a little bit of help being filled in, that is why I'm doing seven on all the corners and just five in the center. That's going to be more than enough. I'm ready to attach and what I do when I attach bows or little petals, I always put my wreath form upside down so that the sides are swooping up. That way it's just easy to fill everything in. I'm going to start in the middle, twisting the remaining pipe cleaner up, folding it in and back. Because we're putting this bow in the center, I'm not worried about the stability of the bow because we have the side rows to kind of keep it from wobbling over. So this will be just fine. Now the red one, and I'm going to be attaching them every other color going all the way around. My first section is done and when this wreath gets filled up, all of these little bows are going to poof up because we're still going to have seven over here. So this is going to be a very full and beautiful wreath. And by the way, I'm loving the combo of the red and the light blue. And now I'm just flipping the wreath back over. Just finished attaching the seven bows on this corner and wanted to show you just how full this is and how evenly spaced out our deco mesh is. So very, very nice. And for this wreath form, the two rolls of deco mesh is more than enough to have a beautiful full wreath. As you can see, my inspector is here. The wreath is all done done look how full and beautiful this is now we're going to add some ribbon a little bow on the corner and i am going to put this wreath diagonally i got my cutting mat out because it is time to cut some ribbon i'm going to be cutting this beautiful cherry ribbon into 12 inch strips and i'm going to need seven of these after I folded my seven pieces at 12 inches, I'm going to cut the ends and then fold the little corners over and cut little triangles because I am making dovetails just like that. And of course, I'm doing the same thing on the other side. I got my cherry ribbon done. Same thing with this blue and white buffalo check. I'm going to need seven pieces at 12 inches long, and I'm also going to cut and make dovetails on the ends. The next thing I'm going to do is make little ribbon bundles, and I'm going to be using some pipe cleaners that I cut up earlier, and all I'm going to do is just grab one of each, and you can either fold them in half to find the center, like this, twist in the back or what I like to do is just lay it right on your measuring mat it's 12 inches you know where the center is and just gather right there in the center grab a pipe cleaner and twist in the back we're going to attach to the wreath a little later now it's time to get our sign ready cut off the little jute cord and I'm going to grab three pipe cleaners fold them in half but I am going to make a little flat space like this and I'm going to attach in three places this is regular hot glue, but it's black in color. And all I'm doing is making a little line so I can attach my little pipe cleaner. And then I'm going to grab some leftover felt pieces. Some people like to use ribbon, some people use fabric, but I like to use the felt pieces. And as I always say, this is my tried and true method to make sure that my sign stays put. 
I decided to do a funky bow for this wreath and I also added a white ribbon. It is wired at one and a half inches just like these two. For my printed ribbon, I'm going to be cutting two strips each at 22 inches. I don't think I need too much of it. I don't need it to be too poofy. I don't need it to be too big. It's going to be in the corner of the wreath, fold the edges and do a little dovetail. When it comes to the white ribbon, I'm going to use it as kind of like a brightening part of the wreath. So I'm going to do three strips of the white and also, of course, at 22 inches. To bring the bow together, I'm going to be using a bow maker just to have something hold it. You can use a clip or you can just fold the ribbon in half and kind of hold it in your hand. This is just much easier. The game plan is to start with my white one and I want the little tails to peek out just a little bit. So I'm going to go to five inches and put my little bow in. Next, I'm going to have my blue one. And this time I'm going to have the loop going on the other side where the tail is. So I'm going to go to five inches and put that in. Now I'm bringing my cherry together, fold it in half measure the five inches and just put it down as you're doing this if you have a ribbon that is one-sided like my cherry ribbon what you would want to do is grab the one that's facing down and twist it this way it is all set next we have the white one again and the loop is going to go on the opposite side you guys are getting the point right we're just going to flip flop it back and forth until we are done using up our ribbon. And this is one of those really easy and fun bows to make that I feel like anyone can do. Just try it a few times and you will love it. You are going to have a professional looking bow. It's so much fun because this is one-sided. I'm going to get the part of the ribbon that's facing down and we're going to face it up. And now our white one is the last to be put on. Next I'm grabbing a zip tie and I'm going to zip tie this bow together. You don't have to because I mean this is not a big bow but zip tying just always makes me feel so good. I know this bow is going to stay put no matter what. Let me cut the little tail off and now I'm just going to grab another pipe cleaner, twist it in the back and we're ready to attach this sweet little bow to the wreath. I'm ready to bring this wreath all together. We're going to put it diagonally, of course. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the bow on top. The sign is going to go towards the bottom and our ribbon bundles are going to go in between. So let me do the ribbon bundles first. Basically, we have a ribbon bundle for each section of the wreath. And then on the eighth section, this is where our bow is going to go. Just find a nice spot and attach the little ribbon bundle. I know the numbers are not even on our little bows, but that's okay. Just put them here and there. We'll make it fit and look nice. My ribbon bundles are on, and now on the eighth little section in the corner is where I'm going to attach my bow. One of the most important things is make sure that you don't pull on the pipe cleaners too far so that the bow gets really kind of distorted by being shoved within the little deco mesh. Make sure that the bow is kind of loosey-goosey. It'll stay in place. It'll be fine. And then attach. I usually don't touch my ribbon until the sign is on, everything's on. But in this case, because we're working diagonally, I want to make sure that the bow is in a good place. All my little ribbon bundles are good before I put on the sign. So when it comes to the ribbon bundles, I always say this, we are going to make flowers. We're going to just kind of open them up like this and make little flowers. How beautiful. Now it's time to get the bow going and I'm just going to start kind of spreading everything out and all the loops, we're going to open and kind of flatten them on top. And if I need to, I will wiggle them here and there and just spread the little tails out. 
and kind of work in those poofs and just continue playing with the bow until it makes you smile because trust me it will how can you not smile looking at all these pretty colors and it looks so professional but you guys saw that i just cut folded and layered that's it okay my friends so here is the wreath so far i can still play with it and make it prettier a little later but right now i want to bring in the sign and i'm so glad i did the ribbon bundles first because i initially wanted to kind of put the sign here but as you can see it fits really really nicely right there in the center so that is what i'm going to do now that i have it here i'm going to do a little flip and start attaching my sign to twists. The center one, I initially wanted to attach here, but since our situation has kind of changed, I'm just going to reach out to the sides and attach the pipe cleaners there. It's still going to help support the sign. The sign is secure. I'm going to make a little hanging loop. And of course, this is the jute cord that came from the sign. And I'm going to just put it right there in the center, a few little knots, and that should be fine. If you would like to cover the back of the wreath, the best way to do it in this situation, because we do have some areas that are see-through on this side and a little bit here possibly, I would use a ribbon, in this case maybe a two and a half inch ribbon, and just hot glue it to the edges if covering the back is important for you and now i'm just going to straighten out the bow once again and then the ribbon bundle since you know i kind of flattened them out when i was attaching the sign and that is it for our beautiful square no fray little cherry deco mesh wreath sweetest pie yes you are all right you guys what did you think of the wreath i thought it was absolutely adorable i love those little cherries in the comments below when you're saying hello to me if you can please leave a little cherry emoji i would greatly appreciate that with that being said we would love to see you in our next video for now we're going to say bye bye my friends and have a beautiful and blessed day right louis say bye Bye, guys.